Greetings all. Last Outrider here, bringing you the next part of the Blood Angels story and the beginning of the Battle of Port Helios with a bloody swath. Lit by the blaze of the Prometheum moat and the early dawn, the Blood Angels charged into battle. Dante was first upon the ground his headlong assault taking him into the heart of the swarm that milled before the mighty, firelit gates of Port Helios. Though Hormagants and Termagants pressed in from all sides, the sanguinary guard carved a path deep into the Tyranid lines, Dante at their tip. Seeing the size and ferocity of the Tyranid swarms now pouring from the ruined city, Dante abandoned his initial plan to link up with the defenders inside the port. Instead, he directed his battle brothers to defend the spaceport's southern gates, where the Tyranid swarms were thickest and the flames were burning low. At the base of the vast fuel sluice that ran down from the port into the moat, a forward, the forward elements of Dante's Demi Company came crashing down. Drop pods hammered into the earth. Crimson armored warriors poured out to secure the landing zone for those that came after. Meanwhile, the air howled and screamed as squadrons of Space Marine aircraft engaged the swooping broods of winged beasts. Almost at once, the hive mind responded to the Blood Angel's assault, and the swarm, which had moments before been focused upon the port, shifted to assail the Space Marines. Leaping, scrambling lines of aliens converged upon the Blood Angels. Larger weapon beasts and Tyranid warriors hurling living rounds from afar as smaller bio horrors charged across the broken ground. Adding to the mayhem, spores began to rain down from the sky. These burst above and among the blood angels, covering them with caustic fluids and chitinous shrapnel. In response, the Lord of the Blood Angels called in his own fire support, and devastators sent salvos of fire crashing into the alien lines. Dante waded through the broods before him. The axe mortalis became ever more fouled with alien gore as the chapter master sought out those bioforms he knew to be leader beasts. Following his movements, the sanguinary guard covered his flanks, their glaives crackling with energy as they carved through the carapace and talon. Stepping under the sweep of a pair of bone-like blades, Dante hewed the head from a Tyranid warrior before turning in a single motion to hack the legs out from under another. Dozens of smaller beasts snapped and clawed at the chapter master, but his armor turned their blows. Whenever a larger creature loomed close to the commander, he raised his inferno pistol, blasting it back in a gout of superheated ichor. Gradually, the swarm was breaking upon his host of golden warriors, and they began to clear a path, a perimeter, before the gates of the port. One by one, the Blood Angels were thinning out the ranks of the Tyranid leadership, and with them, the power of the hive mind waned upon the battlefield. Disordered, knots of gaunts, without powerful consciousness to guide them, 
were easily led into Blood Angel's kill zones or driven back into the city. The sergeants of the bloodied ordered their squads to advance upon the weakened alien army. Patterns of interlocking bolter fire pulverized the nearest foes. Mass reactive shells bursting the Xenos apart in great blooms of gore. As the tactical squads cleared the line between port and city, they came under fire from dug-in tyranid organisms, which seemed more like fortifications than life forms. At first, the heavy bioweapons of the sporocysts slowed the space marine advance. Crystalline shells and writhing barbed bombs bursting amongst their lines. Then, Dante ordered forward his assault squads, the space marines bounding over the alien defenses on jump packs to plant crack grenades amongst spore-breathing vents. With a series of wet thumps, several of the spores came apart, spilling out a tide of vile liquid and torn, misshapen flesh. In moments, the blood angels, angels were pushing through the Tyranid defenses, flamers and meltaguns burning away any alien survivors. In the space of less than an hour, Dante's host had driven off the swarms around the port and secured its gates and fuel conveyors. Now, the Blood Angels could begin to ferry down support personnel and heavy armor whilst looking to the evacuation of whatever Imperial refugees remained. Next time, we have Psychic Storm. I presume that will be a Tyranid counterattack. But now, a little bonus for you who stayed to the end. Mephiston, the Lord of Death. The Blood Angel's chief librarian is an enigmatic and terrifying figure. Once known as Brother Calistarius, Mephiston was remade upon the battlefields of Armageddon when the black rage took him. Incredibly, the librarian was able to master the madness of the flaw, transcending the spiritual course bound within his gene seed. So far, the only known member of his chapter to have overcome the black rage. He is held in awe by his battle brothers. Mephiston is still a blood angel. Yet, he has become something greater and more terrible. Since his ascension, the chief librarian stands alone, even from the other members of the chapter's librarius. Mephiston is a figure of suspicion and fear to many outside his chapter. Yet, none can deny his psychic might. The Lord of Death ranks high amongst the most powerful psychers in the Imperium. His mind, a weapon of incredible lethality. There you go, folks. Until next time. Bye.